Hi, hello. Welcome to the vlog. The reading vlog. <laughs> it has been a while since I filmed and that is because I've been insanely busy. A lot of things have changed for me in my personal life and in my working life. I am working two jobs. I'm getting a master's degree and uh, yeah, so this is kind of taking a back seat and I don't know if I'll be able to continue to upload, but I'm gonna do my best to do a reading vlog this weekend. With that being said, <laughs> I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to read this weekend because we are going to visit some friends and we are going to the Renaissance Fair. So that eats up a lot of my reading time for this weekend. Here's the plan for this weekend. I'm about 30% of the way through The Queen of Midnight by Evangeline Anderson. And this is the second book in a series. I think it's in a series. Um, I feel like they're not, they're maybe interconnected somehow, but um, it's not the same characters. I don't know, it doesn't feel like it's part of the same series. So I think you could read this as a standalone. Um, listen, listen. It is hot garbage, okay? It's absolute trash. Um, but I like it. <laughs> um, so I'm about 30% of the way through that. I don't think I'll be able to finish that. I'm also about 80% of the way through another audiobook, which I'm not going to be talking about um, because it's an author that I'm choosing not to give a platform to. And it's an author that I'm not spending money on. So uh, that's sad that about that. I would like to start the second the second Suki Stackhouse book. Um, True Blood the Show is based on a book uh, and I'm, I read the first one and it was terrible and wonderful and I loved it. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm working on the second one. Uh, so that's what I'm reading this weekend. Let's go inside and I'll show you things that I've bought lately. So a couple of things that I've bought recently. Mind you, I work at a bookstore so I get a discount. <laughs> so a friend recommended On Palestine. This is by Ilan Pape. I don't know if I'm saying it right. And Noam Chomsky. She also recommended a short history of the Israel-Palestine conflict. These are very short. <laughs> These are all kind of like bummers. Congratulations, The Best is Over by Eric R. Thomas. This is a collection of essays and it's signed. Everything I Learned, I Learned in a Chinese Restaurant by Curtis Chen. This is also signed. This is a memoir. Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dan. Eve Bites Back. <laughs> um, a graphic novel called Love Advice from the Great Duke of Hell. This is my friend Morgan's recommendation. Two very recent editions is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate and Life Form by Jenny Slate. This is also signed. I'm currently reading this. Oh, I will try to read some more of this this weekend too. I'm currently reading this. The first essay had me crying. It's absolutely beautiful. I have been like underlining things that I like. What I liked so much about this first one, I think the first one essay has been my favorite. It's about her talking about how she went to Stonehenge and like the weird things that she was thinking about how like she thinks that they're they're witches and they just need to be um anyway so she wrote I asked this because I feel a kinship to the stones and what I now understand about the witches and the work that they do I ask because even though I have all these pictures and they're evidence of my living there is a lot of my life that seems to like it happened while I was stuck inside of something and I I was reading this and I was like crying <laughs> anyway so this is beautiful and weird and I'm obsessed with it. Okay, and then one more thing that I've gotten recently that I did pay full price for and it was like $60, uh, but it was worth it because I love this series and that is the, they're heavy, the Barnes and Noble exclusive editions of One Dark Window and Two Twisted Grounds. These are lovely, but I don't like that the title isn't on the front, it's only on the spine. I like that they're very heavy they have nice foiling on the hardcover. Uh, they're very heavy, but what I absolutely hate uh, to the point where I'm like, I will never open these books, which I've already read them, so I don't need to, is that the paper is bright white. Why? <laughs> Why is the paper bright white? Here is an example. This is Bull Moon Rising by Ruby Dixon. This is the first edition. This book is great, by the way. I love this. If you like some of the other books that I've liked, you will love this. This paper is not 
bright white. They're so heavy. It doesn't need to be this shade. Okay, that's upsetting. That's upsetting. And what's more upsetting is that I ordered the new edition of the Puppy War that's coming out. It's coming out this week. It's beautiful. But the same thing, the pages are bright white. And that is obnoxious, okay? Like, that is so upsetting. I'm angry about it. So, uh, anyways, those are some things that I bought recently. So, the plan for this weekend, I'm going to try to finish Queen of Midnight. The Queen of Midnight. Uh, I am going to try to start the next Suki Stackhouse book. I'm going to try to read some more of Life Form by Jenny Slate. So, that's the plan. Let's see if I can actually manage to film this. Don't look at how messy my house is. You cannot see anything past this. So yeah, that's the plan. And I will see you soon. Hi, hello. Um, welcome to my extremely messy bedroom. You can see behind me, that is the pile of clean clothes that needs to be put away. There's a chair <laughs> over there in that corner and I pile everything on that chair rather than folding it. <laughs> And there's mostly sheets on it right now. I, because I'm so busy, I'm having to film these uh, just whenever I can. And this is kind of the time when I have a second to, you know, do something. So I'm just getting ready for work. And I thought I'd talk about the reading so far. It is Friday morning. I'm getting ready to go into work. I'm going to go in a little bit early because I am filming a Giving Tuesday video for the bookstore. We are a bookstore and a nonprofit. And so as a nonprofit, most nonprofits participate in Giving Tuesday. So I'm working on some content for that. As far as what I've been reading, how reading has gone, I haven't read any more of Life Form by Jenny Slate. I haven't, you know, I just haven't had time. I'm physically reading that one. And I just haven't had time to sit down and read. I mean, I can't even sit down and film. I have, I did finish the other audiobook that I had been reading. So that's done. And now I've started on The Queen of Midnight by Evangeline Anderson, I think is what it's called. I discovered this morning because I've been reading it and I've been thinking, you know, this feels like a book too. And I read another book by her last month that had just come out. And I thought that this book was in that same world and it is not. So I'm reading book two in a series and I haven't read book one. I'm still enjoying it. And I, I don't think that the books are connected necessarily. I think it's one of those things where it's a series, but there's different characters for each, for each book. Something not book related, two things, no, three things. First of all, I bought this Danessa Myricks. Let me do the influencer. That's not working. This Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Tint. I look crazy. Because I'm going to try this Danessa Myricks because a lot of people rave about it. See, like my skin looks almost the same. Just like a little bit of blurring, smoothing, color correcting, whatever. Whatever the words are. Anyways, and so so I'm trying this. I really, really like it. It's really, really nice. I don't think that it was super expensive. I think it was like $30 and it's one and a half ounces. I, so I'm really enjoying this. Then, okay, this is no, no tea, no shade. I love this moisturizer. It's by the brand Dew. I really like it. It's great. It works great for my skin. It doesn't sting my eyes if I accidentally get it in my eyes. It's like super moisturizing, super hydrating. It's been amazing. I've been using it consistently for like two years now. It's $70 for the big bottle. And I think it's worth it. If I'm gonna spend money on something, it's gonna be a moisturizer. I think it's worth it. <sighs> However, I went to Target and I saw this. <laughs> Banny Cream Hyaluronic Acid and Ceramides. It's a daily facial moisturizer. This was $14 and this works just as well and this is three ounces and I think the big bottle that's $70 is also three ounces so and I was so I I didn't want this to be good because I wanted to be like well see I am justified in spending $70 on a moisturizer no I've been spending 14 and then the last thing <laughs> and then I'll shut up about my makeup products is this Innistree Hyaluronic 
acid watery sun gel. It's 50 uh, SPF. This is the SPF that I use. This is a Korean brand. Listen, if you're not on Korean skincare or at least sunscreen, what are you doing? <laughs> this is like $18 and I get three at a time. So it's like $50 for three, which is a pretty good deal. It takes forever to ship because they ship it from Korea. Uh, but this is amazing and I am obsessed with this. And it has... It has like a really, really light, like it's barely there sunscreen smell and I love the way sunscreen smells. So yeah, I'm obsessed with that. Anyways, okay, so about the book that I'm reading. Queen of Midnight, I'm really enjoying it. It's, <laughs> like it's not a good book, okay? Like it's not, uh, it's not gonna win any awards for anything. It is, like when you look at the cover, let me put up the cover. You know what this is about from the cover. Like you, you know what this is about, okay? Like, you know exactly what you're getting into. It's fairies, <laughs> dark fae, and yeah, listen, it's good. And I, But I'm also really liking that the main character is like 50. She's a 50 year old woman, her husband was a douche. He left her for a younger woman after she raised his, his children, not even her children, they were his from a previous marriage. And she helped him raise his kids and as soon as his kids were out of the house, she he dumped her for a younger woman, took her for everything she was worth, which wasn't much because she gave up her career to raise his kids. She was living out of her car and discovered, was discovered by the Dark Fae. And turns out she's their long lost princess. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's some sort of like vampiric elements where like she has to drink their the other Fae's blood to like sustain herself and to sustain her magic and um as you can imagine when she drinks their blood other things happen it's just a vehicle for smut um but it does have a little bit of plot and i'm enjoying that I just read a scene where the main character whose name i don't even remember like that's where i'm at i don't even remember her name lily her name's lily lily is at the dinner table with the guy who's been ruling in her stead who wants to be king and not for her to take over, even though she's the rightful, you know, rightful ruler or whatever. And obviously he's made all these bad choices, like lower if they can't have meat so that there's more for them. Um, you know, like that kind of stuff. Classic, typical fantasy, like, oh, the ruler's terrible, that kind of thing. Anyway, so she goes down to the kitchen and she makes some changes and she's like, y'all are gonna have a feast today. And the king is gonna eat some soup and he's very unhappy about it. And he also, she also criticizes him because he said that the lower fay women should not continue to go to school. He said that what's the point of teaching them anything if they're just going to be like cleaning in, in the kitchens for the rest of their life. Super misogynistic. And so she, she like pipes up and yells at him at the dinner table and is like, as if a, a vagina and a brain are mutually exclusive. And I was like, yes, queen, get him. <laughs> It just cracked me up, you know, like even in these books that are just vehicles for smut, there is still political stuff and because there's been a lot of discourse online lately about how books shouldn't be political, blah, blah, blah. Even in your silly little smut books, there's politics. I'm, I am enjoying it. It's not, <laughs> it's not like the most well-written book I've ever read, but I am having a good time and I am obsessed with the cover. Normally, I don't like books with uh, what are probably real people on the covers. Like, I just don't like that. However, I am noticing that I find myself really gravitating towards older covers for romance novels that have real people on them. And especially if they're done up and they're kind of cheesy, like the cheesier the better. I, I find myself, myself drawn to that. Like, I want to own these books because of their covers. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm into it. I, I understand that that's probably not every, for everybody, but I just like, I like looking at a book and being like, this is kind of silly. It's kind of, it's silly. It's not like aesthetically pleasing. Uh, there's a lot of like vibrant colors and you know, that kind of thing. It doesn't fit the trend that's going on with book covers right now. And you know exactly what the book is about on the cover. You know exactly what it's about. And I'm, I like that. I just, there's just something like kind of refreshingly nostalgic about that and I'm into it.
Anyways, so that's where I'm at with the reading. It's Friday. I have a lot of stuff to do at work today, but I feel like these books are kind of short, shorter, so I feel like I might be able to finish that one today or tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure. And if I'm able to do that, then I will start on the next Sookie Stackhouse book. That's how the reading is going. I'm very excited. I'm going to try out a new coffee shop on my way to work this morning. I'm going to get a Vietnamese coffee from Camel City Cafe. And I will be back when there's more updates. It is Monday morning. It's the end of the reading vlog. <sighs> so <laughs> let's recap this weekend. I was able to finish two books. I finished the book that I had started with, which was at like 80%. I finished it. It was, I only have like an hour left, so it doesn't really count. I finished The Queen of Midnight by <laughs> Evangeline Anderson and listen. I really enjoyed this book. Okay, like <laughs> it's not um it's not exceptionally well written. The plot is not anything new. Uh sorry, my chair is squeaking. But I really it was a really good time. It was a good time book and sometimes that's what just what you need is a good time book. To finish that, really enjoyed it. And then I had planned on starting the next Sookie Stackhouse book which I think is called Dead in Dallas. And I decided I did not want to start that. And I decided to start a nonfiction book called The Highest Law in the Land, How un how the Unchecked Power of Sheriffs Threatens Democracy. And uh, this is by Jessica Pishko. Fishko, but there's no H. It starts with a P. I don't know how you say their last name. Anyways, and what's so interesting about this is I'm about halfway through and it's really well written. It's really well researched. And what I'm really enjoying is, so this is about kind of super right wing sheriffs and how they kind of feel like they have this unchecked power that's given to them constitutionally. And to be honest, they kind of do. And it's kind of interesting. But what is so interesting about this is that I am very left leaning. And in my politics, in my political view, I'm very left. And so sometimes I'm like, wow, how can these people think these things? Like, how can they believe that? And this book does a really great way of giving you facts and showing instances of things that have happened. And you can kind of, you kind of understand, like I can understand how we got to where we are, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm enjoying, she's a journalist. And so it feels like storytelling less than um, it being like, really intense histor history, um, that kind of thing, which I don't typically enjoy reading. Although I don't know, I really, I really do like nonfiction a lot. Um, and I'm, I'm enjoying this book, but I'm finding it very scary because this is not something that I have heard media outlets talking about. There are sheriffs who think that they're above the law and above the constitution. That's a rare appearance of Kit Kat right there. Anyways, uh, so this is, it's really fascinating, but it's also really scary because these are people who are supposed to be upholding the law and they're getting away with all kinds of crazy stuff. It's fascinating to me. Anyways, and I was not able to read any more of Life Form by Jenny Slate. I will finish this, but since I'm reading it physically, it's going to take me a while. This will probably be on the reading vlog for the next couple of weeks. I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish this nonfiction, The Highest Law on the Land, in the next day or two. I am going to do my best to record a reading vlog for this coming weekend, even though it's Thanksgiving. And also I'm going to do my best to try to do a what I read in the month of November. Because I've actually read like 12 books in November, which is pretty good because last month I only read like eight. It was not. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's the plan. 
thank you for joining me for this reading blog. Um, I'm feeling really optimistic about getting this posted because it's already most of the way edited. I just have to edit this last bit. So, um, I will see you in the next video. Bye.